In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at when we need to destroy a scope object in AngularJS. Now, in addition to including Angular, we're actually going to be including um, underscore as well as Angular Sanitize. Underscore is going to be used for some uh, array query operations that we're going to want to do. And then Angular Sanitize is going to be used so that we can actually output some um, some content from a variable as actual HTML to the web page. Now I've also defined a couple of styles here at the top, red dash text, blue dash text, and green dash text. And basically that's just going to be um, some styles set up to set the color of the text and then applying that with a, uh, with a class selector here. Okay, so coming down to our Angular application, let's take a look at this kind of complex directive um, or really complex set of directives that I've created. I basically have created a directive called my select view and basically what it's going to do is give us a drop down box and then when we select a certain color it's going to display that um, color based upon the selection so as you can see here we actually have three different views so we'll have three different items in our drop down and then as we switch them it'll actually change the output so if we come here and look at our web page and reload We'll see that we have blue content, we can change it to red, and we can change it to green. So that's our, our, so that's our directive that we've created here. Now, coming down here looking at the code, you're going to notice that I've included the ng sanitize module. That's so that the HTML that's being applied here behind the scenes to actually make this green or make this red will not be escaped by Angular but actually added to the DOM. And then down here we have two directive definition objects. We have one for my select view, and then we have one down here for my view. Now, the my view one, we're not going to really talk all that much about. Basically, it's simply requiring the controller of my select view. On the controller of my select view, we have a function here called add view. And we're basically passing in the label, the value, and then the HTML content. And what this is going to do is basically build a list of views. Um, for the parent directive so that when we switch from from one value to the next it will grab one of those views and then add it to the DOM and display it. Now coming back up here to that parent directive my select view let's take a look at what we have here we're going to be deploying this as an element we're going to be using an isolated scope passing in um, some type of property from the outside scope into this directive here you can see our controller with our add view functionality and this is our scope views and we're basically adding a view each time we call add view this is the controller um, object that's that's used by the my view directive we saw a couple seconds ago and then down here we have our link function now in our link function we basically have this template for our drop down box that we've created and um, it's it's binding itself to the item property defined here on the isolated scope and then we're using ng options to loop through the views and we can see our list of views and then we have an ng change so that whenever the select box changes it will change the view so coming into here you're going to see where we're actually taking this template we're compiling it and then applying the scope to it and we get our actual select dom element then we're coming down here and actually creating a select view element using angular.element and then we are taking our select view element and we're adding the select element to it and then down here we're creating an actual view element this view element is where we're actually going to place each view for each each option that's selected and then down here finally we actually grab the element on which um, the directives the, uh, the the directives applied and we're actually adding our select view element to that element so now let's take a look at this change view function. In our change view function here, we basically have our template. And we're assigning our template to this template variable. And then we're creating a new child scope off of the scope that this off of the isolated scope for this directive. We're using our underscore find where function to actually find the appropriate view based upon the selected item. And then off of that view, we're, gra we're referencing the content property and assigning that to view content scope or view content scope dot content. Then once again, we're calling the compile service, passing in our view template, and then applying our new child scope. 
and then we're appending those real DOM elements to the actual view element, which represents the content um, that's been selected for that for that dropdown. And then of course we're calling change view on the initial load so that it will go ahead and display that content for whatever the current value is. Now, if we come over to here, I want you to take a look here. We have this um, plugin for AngularJS, Batarang, and on it we can actually look at the models that are defined. So the first thing we need to do is actually click Enable, and then we'll come over to Models, and you're going to see we have a bunch of models here defined. This is going to be our root scope, this is going to be the scope of our controller, this is the isolated scope of our directive, and this is going to be the child scope of the isolated scope, which is blue content right here. Now watch what happens if I change this value. If I go from blue to red, notice a new scope is added. If we click on that, we'll see where it says red content. If I change this to green, observe what happens again. Another new scope is created, green content. If I go back up to red, another new scope is created. But notice all of these older scopes are still hanging around in memory. Basically what we've, what we've created here is basically a memory leak. Um, in our Angular application. We're creating new scopes, but we're not properly destroying them when they're no longer needed. In Angular, the rule is, if you create the scope, you're responsible for cleaning it up. So let's take a look at our code and see how we can actually set it up so that it will do the cleanup process. Instead of defining, declaring our scope right here, we can actually come up here and declare our scope outside of our change view function. So I'm going to uncomment that and then remove this var. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uncomment this code right here. Now what we're going to do is every time change view is called, we're actually going to check to see if the view content scope, which was the last scope that we set up, is not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, that means we need to destroy it and clean it up. So I'm going to output to the console log that we're actually destroying the scope, and then we're going to call a special function called dollar sign destroy. And this will actually clean up the scope for us in Angular. So we're going to save that. We're going to come back to our web page. We're going to reload. Now notice we have our root scope, our controller scope, our directives isolated scope, and the child scope off the isolated scope. Now watch what happens when I change this value up here. We're going to see that now we have scope 5, but scope 4 is gone. If we come to this one, set, set it to green, scope 5 is now gone, and we have scope 6. In fact, if we come over to the console, we'll see where we're actually destroying those child scopes. So the key is this. If you ever create a new scope in your Angular application, you are responsible for cleaning it up. So you need to make sure that you've done what we've done, what we've done here, something similar. Actually... Uh, maintaining some type of reference to that scope and then when it's no longer needed actually calling dollar sign destroy on it to clean it up.